ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Bob Rafelson. So Bob, I just want to thank you again for making that movie. That five of you pieces an amazing film. And uh, I just wanted to ask um, Bob a couple of questions and we'll open it up to the audience. Um, I wonder if you could talk about sort of the genesis of five easy pieces. And what I've always wondered watching the film is that what makes it so great to me is that it seems so intensely personal and almost autobiographical. So I'm wondering how much of you is in the films that you co-wrote it and directed and produced it? Um, it's not about me. <laughs> I decided to do a movie about a character who, um, in the original script, um, he actually dies at the end of the movie. And uh, we, we changed it. At the, at the very end, uh, it, was, it was a hugely difficult decision because I felt that uh, this man um, was doomed to live his life and uh, to search for the rest of his life. And that, um, uh, the, uh, I don't think there's any point telling you what the other ending was, but it had to do with his driving the car in the rain with Rayette and um, it, it went into the water Cars sunk in the bubbles. I actually didn't think maybe it would have been better now that I'm telling it to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talking about the autobiographical feeling of the film, even though it's not about you, um, the scene, which is kind of an emotional high point for me, is when Jack Nicholson talks to his father and tries to explain his life. And I know just when I read of Jack Nicholson, he has issues with his own father and knowing who his father is. Did any of his life sort of enter into the character? Uh, no, I don't think. I, well, well, of course, um, his life leads him to that point um, where he's he's performing, um, and so all of his life um, takes him there. But uh, Jack's life is is is, uh, is a comedy. Uh, it, it's absurd. He never knew who was. He found out who his mother was, who turned out to be his sister. Um, during one of the movies that I was making with him, he got the news that day. Uh, so um, his family background doesn't make any sense with regard to th th that movie. Interestingly, uh, Jack didn't... Now, uh, he, you're talking about the scene where he talks to his father, right? Now, Nicholson didn't want to do the scene. Um, he hated it. Um, and. Um, Uh, I literally had to work very, very hard uh, to, to break his will on this particular issue because he didn't want to cry. And uh, I said, look, I have to see the underbelly of the character, otherwise this m movie is not worth my making. And, um, and we, we talked about several different places, but this, this became the place. Um, and Jack said, no, no, no. And then, um, I think, as I remember it now, I said, but Jack, you know, in your life, I've seen you weep more than once uh, and over things that would probably seem trivial to other people. And he said, that, that's very unfair of you as a director to, to talk about my life that way to me. And I said, um, no, no, that's uh, the ultimate expectation of, of, of me directing you, that I do know a lot about your life. Okay, give me the fucking screen. <laughs> <laughs> so we sat in the car together, um, and he rewrote uh, the scene, the beginning of it particularly. And, uh, 
said, all right, let's do the goddamn thing. So I, I went outside and um, we, we planted the camera and locked it off. I put Jack in front of the camera over there. So, as you saw, I shot, I don't know, cut off at the chest or something. And uh, I said, Jack, um, Look into the camera, let me see. Okay, that's ready. And I held the microphone, and the entire crew was half a mile away. So it's just me switching the button, holding the microphone, and I'll hold it so the jack was over there and the mic was on a boom, on a boom. <laughs> I said, action. I flipped on the camera. And then he did the scene. I, I'm not looking at it. I said, are you done? He said, what the fuck are you talking about? Am I done? You're not even watching the scene. You can't be out here. You don't shit even watching the scene. You don't know if it's over. Say cut, you fucker, sir. <laughs> I said, OK, cut. I said, well, let's do it again for safety. He said, no. And he walked off, and that's it, just how it happened. <laughs> and speaking of actors on the set, um, I have long professed my love for Karen Black, and I think she's so amazing in this film. And you had kind of a funny story about the first scene in the film where we see her and how close she is to the character she's playing. Karen, uh, she's a very exceptional woman. She's very bright. Um, uh, she is a little bit kind of scattered, I suppose, but. Um, just to give an example, the first shot of Karen Black in the movie, I came into the house and I was really scared uh, because it was the first naturalistic, I had made head, but I, it was the first naturalistic movie, not that everything was at stake here. Um, and it was the first day of the shooting. And, uh, I'll tell you, I'm just thinking about something kind of strange. Um, uh, we're making the first shot of uh, Nicholson on the couch and then she joins him on the couch. And, um, uh, well, let me go backwards a moment. Uh, I came in to look at the set, and, uh, and I looked all around the rooms, and uh, that we were going to shoot in the three or four rooms, and I saw Karen putting on her own makeup, we didn't have makeup artists, but on her own makeup, and sitting in the sink. And I said, don't move. Showed it to Laszlo, and, the, and I said, that's what I think the character should do. Uh, so this is the way we will introduce Karen Black. Now, and, and then we, were, we shot that later, but we were shooting the living room first, and there's, there are things that cameramen um, um, are plagued by. One of them is um, um, a sunny, cloudy day. Sun, but with clouds because the light is always passing and changing with the, the, the passing of the cloud. And as a result of that, they can't get a proper exposure because you're exposing one where it's dark, and then you're exposing for another one with light. And if there's a change, you can't change the shutter on the camera. Anyway, it's rather technical. But the other thing that they really loathe and despise in their lives is a moth. <laughs> because a moth will see a light like this and you all know how suicidal they are, you know, they, they go right to the light. Uh, so uh, there was a moth on the set. And uh, the gaffers, the guys who work the crew, the lighting people, and the, uh, the guys who move the furniture, everybody uh, is trying to kill the moth. And they're swatting it and it darts away and darts away. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me handle this. He stopped. And I put my hand out. It was sort of a Jesus thing. <laughs> and the morph flew directly into my hand and I plopped it. <laughs> I walked over to the door and I threw the morph out and I said, now gentlemen, let's start making five easy pieces. <laughs>